to another vlog. Been up and about this morning, haven't I? Um, I, I, had, I showered and got dressed. Um, I put in some earrings and I've been at work in my office at a table for about two hours. So that's good. But now I'm back in here because I feel really lightheaded and, you know, I just need a little rest. So, yeah, I thought I'd, I'd start to vlog again today. Um, thank you to everybody for your comments on the last vlog and, yeah, just the love that's coming through. I need to get to a point where I respond. I will respond to all of your comments. I need to respond to them as I read them. That would make things a lot easier. Um, okay, so I've picked up another book and I picked it up yesterday. This is My Life as a Fake by Peter Carey. This isn't part of any project or anything, but it has sat on my shelf for ages and I've always been interested in reading about it. Um, it's fabulous. It's got these deckled edges and it's this hardcover and I just, I love it with the pink inside. Yeah, I just love it. Um, Peter Carey is an Australian author. I'm pretty sure he lives in New York now, but we claim him. I am how many pages in? something 50 pages in so I've only just started it this book is about a guy in Australia I think in the 1940s who um takes somebody else's poetry a man who has died takes his poetry and gets it published in a journal and then that journal is then tried for any inappropriate content and then the 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 poetry is found out to be a hoax and then this guy runs away to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia um so I thought it would kind of start at the start of this guy and follow this man through how it came to be that he stole somebody else's poetry and passed it off as his own and and kind of it would be just that story but we started out many many years later um and it's from the point of view of a woman who's a publisher who gets taken to Kuala Lumpur and then meets this man and then now he is recounting his story to her so it was really intriguing even from the start that it was yeah it started out differently to what I expected um and that yeah that engaged me a lot I really enjoy Peter Carey's writing I think this is the third book of his that I've read um but yeah I I, I really really enjoy it so yeah this book has absolutely hooked me in for sure so I'm going to have a lie down now and um, read this and hopefully drop off to sleep. Rough night's sleep last night. Too many thoughts. Too many thoughts. Okay. Nice chatting with you again. I'll let you know when I've read some more. Hi. It's a little bit later. I had a nap. I read about maybe, I don't know, 15 pages of my book. So I, um, our school is thinking of shutting early. It was, I think it was two weeks before holidays so the thought is that they may shut on friday so i wrote a list and i know i said i wouldn't write lists but i wrote this list because i needed to kind of come up with what i could do with the kids if they were at home and i realized that i don't have i used to when the kids were little i used to have a craft cupboard that i collected stuff from garage sales and just had glue and paper and all those things in it and I don't have that anymore so I'm going to um, put an order in online of all of these things to kind of make sure that we have some stuff here just in case everything does go to pot you know like I know they don't need all this stuff but just simple things like paint and sticky tape and balloons I need to have balloons in the house they can provide at least 10 minutes of fun so yeah, I'm going to do up some online ordering. My husband's going to go and collect them. And then I might, you know, just try to pull everything together, hey? Come on, Let's have a feeling we're going to be making a few of these paper planes over the next little Ow. while. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> I just climbed into bed. I knew this would happen, that when you're sick and you kind of hibernate for a few days and you start to come out of it, even though you're not completely better, you just say, I'll just fix that up or I'll just do this 
or because other people in your family say that you're up and about like oh can you just chuck that on or just fix that up or whatever and you get to the end of the day and you just feel completely wrecked I had a client call I had you know I got um see I can't even talk I did dinner I did all of the things but I just said to my husband I gotta I gotta check out and go to my bed that's for the book that's what this vlog is about I just I need to calm down a bit so I'm gonna watch I've been watching the Big Bang Theory I've only ever watched a couple of episodes here and there but I just have been binge watching it on Netflix and it's actually quite funny and it's a very good relief from Instagram feeds everybody's Instagram feeds just too much there's so many memes flying around. There's too many memes. Okay. Um, yeah, so I might just chill out with that. And if I do read some, I'll let you know. Sun goes up, sun comes down. Love is in me. Around and around. I love you. Love me. That's how simple life can be. That's how simple life can be. Bit of a rough morning. I think we're all just taken in these waves sometimes. When life throws you a curveball, you need to get practical. <laughs> it's the only way I can think of saving myself. I just journaled about uh, the, the nurturing soul that is inside of me. The, at the core of me is being prepared for my family and taking, nurturing them through food and through creation of a safe place for them to be. And I don't feel prepared in that at all. And I've been sick and I need to cut myself some slack, but I just, I just feel underprepared. So I feel like I need to pull it all together. And today is the day where I absolutely go through and sort out what needs to be done to make us okay because I don't feel okay at the moment and I know they might be feeling okay but I don't feel okay it's not about control it's about eliminating that sinking feeling in my stomach and I think I can do that with some very small, easy steps, but I need to buy some chickpeas. <laughs> like this is where we're at. This level of preparedness is where I need to be. <laughs> chickpeas solve everything. I'm sorry, this was about creating calmness, but it's also about authenticity. And I hope that this is connecting us when I feel really separate. I hope this can be just a little diary. You know, I think this, this is really going to remind us all of what's at the core of what we need. And I'm just going to sit down and, and work that out. Anyway, I'm rambling now. I'll write my list. <laughs> I'll write my list today and then I'm going to go in and I'm gonna do it with Danny and we're gonna make it happen and I'm going to 
I'm just gonna make it happen. <laughs> Hello. It's a switchie. <laughs> 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 Holy moly. Hi. Hi. Um, I can't, you know, today's one of those days where from where it started to where it is now feels like just miles apart. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know. I remember this morning, oh God, I woke up sad and scared and anxious. And today I checked off the list and I, I got control and I, it helps because I feel just so much better. Um, I haven't had a nap today. I work today. Yeah, just, I just feel like today I needed that release this morning, maybe that just serious emotional release. And now we're here. I, um, just finished blessing the house and I decided I needed to sit in my green chair so that's what I'm gonna do and read some of this I don't know what we've talked about with this book so we're in Kuala Lumpur and the narrator who is an editor of a magazine in London uh, what is her name <laughs> there you go Sarah Went on a holiday to Kuala Lumpur with some guy, met some other guy who performed this hoax, a literary hoax, and claimed some poems as his own in Australia and had to flee Australia and has ended up in Kuala Lumpur, get lost and destitute, and now wants to tell his story to Sarah to kind of set the record straight. And I think that's what I'm getting. Um... There's lots of kind of weird, unbelievable things. The fact that Sarah's in Kuala Lumpur just is not believable to me. She went on an invitation of a man who she believes caused her mother to commit suicide because they were having an affair. So why you would go on a trip with him, I wouldn't know. And then in Kuala Lumpur, she stumbles across this guy and hands him her magazine and he's like the appearance of him is disgusting and he's destitute and looks homeless and he smells and he's got sores all over his face and stuff but when she finds out from her friend that he committed this big hoax she gives him her magazine and there's kind of this ulterior motive behind it like she's an editor and an editor has to show off her 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 work but that was really weird to me and then now that he's recounting the story, I mean, it's all a bit mixed up. And yeah, those elements are unbelievable. I don't want to share those because, I don't know, it just doesn't make logical sense. I don't know whether it's meant to be comedic and that's, that's why it's just coming off as a bit unbelievable. I don't know. The writing is really great and the way that the story is being told is is um, not as I expected. So that's great. But yeah, it's just a bit, it's just a bit bizarre. It's just, I'm, I'm like, what the hell? A lot. So, but anyway, it's not doing enough to make me want to put it away. So yeah, I'm going to have a read. That'll be really nice. Huh. Okay. A little brighter. Coming to you a lot brighter. <laughs> come out because that little man in the green shirt has been waiting for these guys to come back in on the horse so he can go for a ride. He's just been waiting so patiently with his helmet on. He's such a little legend. I just wanted to make sure <laughs> that he wasn't going with those horses. Anyway. birthday when Bob next Wednesday and we've had to cancel the birthday party but as a treat we just ordered a $50 <laughs> 
Baskin and Robbins ice cream cake. Can you believe that? $50 for a birthday cake. Holy smokes. Lucky I went for the smaller size. Wait, what? No! <laughs> no, it serves eight people. Ooh, yeah, I get to. Anyway, there was a little treat. Last year for Patty's birthday, we moved house. And then this year we were going to have a big birthday party, but now coronavirus. coronavirus and our social responsibility means that that's not a good idea. So we'll just party here. What else do you want to do with us at home on your birthday? You just mentioned you were staying home from school. Yes. Oh, right. I did that last year. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Oh. You have the worst memory. So. What are we going to do all day? I know. Do what I want to do. Good point. My birthday. Good point. Anyway, that was just a little um, fun little thing we just did. Thought I'd share with you. Fifty dollars for a cake though is ridiculous. So ridiculous. <laughs> well, it's been an eventful afternoon, and it didn't. It wasn't supposed to be, was it? I was supposed to be reading. I was so hopeful. I had a client call. I had a friend call. I called another friend. I'm trying to reach out and make sure I need to call my dad back. Oh, dad. Um, <laughs> I think everybody's reaching out and it's wonderful. It's really wonderful. But it doesn't help with my reading. Oh, I had a 20 minute shower. I sat down in that shower too. It was amazing. And then I spoke to Simon on Vox, which was just lovely. Whew. One thing at a time. Just a lot. So I don't know what time it is. I have no idea. But I feel wrecked. I'll update you in the morning. It's been a roller coaster of a day, huh? But that's okay. That's okay. Okay. I'm going to sleep. I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night. Good morning. It is Thursday. It is officially the seven day mark of isolation and I'm definitely feeling much better. Oh, I had a late night jaffle. The thing that's going to, does everybody know what a jaffle is? It's a toasted sandwich. Is that an Australian thing to call it a jaffle? We have jaffle makers. And it's the, the thing that you, but not the press, it makes the lines in the bread. Anyway, I just said Jaffa. I was like, does everybody know what that is? Anyway, let me know. <laughs> um, today is our show holiday. So no school. I know a lot of people have kids that are staying at home with them now, but our kids still go to their little school. So yes, they're home. And I've already had one breakdown over not being able to draw. So we're just about to sign up for Skillshare because every YouTuber and his dog has a Skillshare code. And so I'm going to utilize one of those and um, yeah, sign up for Skillshare. And we're going to take a drawing class together. We're going to learn how to draw characters. That's something that I really want to do, but I'm being supportive. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what's online for today. Now that I've thought about the jaffle, maybe I need to make myself another one. Now I'm putting into practice my um, new state of mind around structure and things like that. The, I don't need them. I need rhythm, right? So normally if the kids are home, I'm like lined up activities. We sort out our day, what we're going to do in the morning, you know, whatever. I'm not going to create some sort of schedule and structure. We're not going to write down what we want to do. We're just going to do what presents itself to us <laughs> I, don't, I don't cope well I don't cope well with that at all it it benefits everyone it really really benefits me so I need to em embrace but this is going to be a big test for me today I, it's also going to be a test staying away from them um but we're going to try uh Denny's got a necessary business meeting um that he's still trying to see if he can do remotely but um yeah he's got to work today so actually what i did see was the list of essential services that will stay open and bottle shop was on there 
I think in Australia, if you cut out the booze, everybody would riot. I just was thinking, is Denny's job an essential? He's in construction, so I don't know. But anyway, funny. Um, okay, I'm going to go and make myself a jaffle because I want to. Now that I've spoken to you, thank you for that inspiration. So yeah, come along for this day of no structure, rhythm. Rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. Okay. I could be doing this full time and I'm already freaking out about day one, but let's go. Oh, look, the Jaffa Maker from the late night snack is still out. This is, yeah, this is a Jaffa Maker. Does everyone have Jaffles? Okay, just, just thought I'd update you on that. Right, wet out, yummo. There's this really cool um, Instagrammer called Xanthi B. And I'll, I'll try and remember to leave it. She does these really cool day in the life, just Instagram videos. And she teaches online video because she's, she's cool. She's from London. Anyway, she does these cool like dress scenes where it's before she got changed and then after, and she kind of edits it really well. And I just got dressed and I thought, oh, I should have tried that. Like I watch it every day and I think, oh God, I'd love to try it. But now I changed. Oh gosh. This is what a bedroom looks like when I haven't slept in it for ages. Oh, let's be real, it looks like that when I do sleep in it. <laughs> We're doing our first Skillshare drawing video. We're drawing, tracing over a picture of some really muscly dude right now. Anyway, step one, it's exciting. get stuck into this book today I feel like doing that um, I am at 84 it's 270 pages long it's not a big book at all so it's certainly doable to get a good chunk done and the joy of reading these decorative books oh I don't know why every publisher doesn't do it it's just such a joy okay let's see whether this can get a bit more believable mm. I bought was these the long balloons that you turn into balloon animals so now they're trying to do that hopefully you can read some more I'm kind of getting a bit disheartened with it to tell you the truth it's not really tickling me as much as it used to but anyway I'll persist for a little while longer and let you know so something just clicked in the book and uh, maybe it's a spoiler, but let's just say there's a reason the story was so ridiculous and, um, yeah, things weren't playing out very well and I was starting to get just like a bit disillusioned with just the lack of sense in the story, but there's a reason for it and it just got dropped. So we're back on track. We're back on track and actually more intrigued now. Still in my green chair. Nobody's bothering me. Crab. Putting my ups and downs with this book. Page, oh, it was the page before. 135, it went back to being unbelievable and completely coincidental. Like, honestly, come on, Betty Carey. Why are you taking me on this roller coaster ride? One minute I'm up and then I plunge straight back down in the next chapter. Hi. It's half past six and I only just got into the granny flat. Because my husband decided to take his sweet ass time and because my clients called me one of the things that is going on at the moment is with all this corona stuff is the Australian government is helping businesses and so as a, a bookkeeper I need to kind of be up to date with all of that so it's been one of those frantic afternoons where clients have called and things needed to be done so I'm hot. I'm really hot. The, the old temperature has um, brewed its ugly head along with a frantic afternoon. So I'm going to go have a cool shower and 
and hop into bed. I really wanted to get this finished. I think I have like 120 pages to go, but the way I'm feeling, holy moly moly. I just want to like curl in bed with, um, what's it called? What's that show I'm binge watching? Um, <laughs> this is insane. Um, like complete blank. Oh, the universe is in a hot dance bed tonight. But can I end this? This can't go up till the end of it's, 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 Big Bang. I'll start with the Big Bang. <laughs> Big Bang Theory. Oh, God. I need a shower. I made it to bed. I've opened my book. I want to read it. Let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> I'm finding it hard to tell you where I'm at with this book because I don't want to give spoilers away, but it's it's kind of the rantings of a, of a madman and it's being told like it's... Oh, God, that door just opened by itself. <laughs> oh, that stuff freaks me out. Anyway, this madman's story is just, it's just the main story of the book. Like we're finding out how he got to Kuala Lumpur, I guess. But like I'm not invested in it because it's not a real story. Like at the end, it's going to be found that he's, spoiler, making all this shit up. Well, maybe it's not a spoiler. I don't really know, but I'm confused as to why the author is doing it like this because I'm not invested in it because I know it's all a load of rubbish. But it's being it's it's the main story of all of these pages. So I've got like I've got a hundred pages to go and I just don't really feel like I care. I'm I i do not care. Because it's all gonna be told to me that's a load of rubbish, right? So that's where I'm at. I just wanna get it done now. I hate that. I hate it so much. But I'm on the down. I'm on the down. We went up for a bit there. I'm on the down. I've, got, I've just got to wait for the up, don't I? Okay, right. Thanks for helping me with that. I hope it comes soon because I'm kind of done. But done. Two stars. Maybe three. Oh, I had so look. I was so looking forward to reading this book too. Started out so promising. Anyway, that's the end of that. I, you know, like I don't even have a wrap up for you. I don't. I don't even care. <laughs> it was just all a big mess for me. I, I didn't. It. It didn't. It didn't make any sense. The up and downs are not enough to save this book for me. Not happy. I'm ready to go to bed. I will see you in the next vlog. With fingers crossed, a better book. Good night, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye.